Hello and welcome back to our building series. Previously we got our solar panel object working and when we interact with it it says the word hello. Um, what we want to do now is change it so it spawns a window up uh, displaying the amount of power this thing has uh, got and is gaining. So to do this we need to first of all make the user interface element first. So let's go into my user interface folder and let's make a widget class, widget blueprint and this would be a power panel and this power panel is going to be a quite a simple panel and um, we're going to get rid of the canvas panel here actually no I'll leave the canvas panel there um, instead we're just going to put in our uh, border and drag that into our canvas panel and I'm just going to resize it and center it into the center of the screen here so I'm going to go into anchors here set anchor to middle change the alignment to 0.5 and 0.5 that will position it dead center where you want it to be and I'm going to change the position here to 0 and 0 and now you can see it's in the center of the screen uh, let's change the size so let's put in let's say uh, 300 maybe 500 that's better and in Y we'll do 300 I think that would do so this will be a very simple panel. It's just going to be a simple dialog box that shows how much power this thing currently has and how much it is gaining every single second. Okay, or every single tick at least anyway. So let's change the background of the color of this. Uh, let's change the brush color. And I'm going to do it as black 0.8 and click OK. And inside that border, we're going to put in a various amount of text fields. So in here, I need a vertical box. Because I want to stack my text fields vertically, I need a vertical box. So the first text field is simply going to say the type of power that is going into it. So this text here will go into here first. And I'm going to center align it in the justification. And that, as I said, is going to be the title of it. So for example, for our solar panel, it will say solar panel. So I'll make that variable. And this will be power block name. Uh, we'll put in underscore text as well at the end there so we know what it is in the verbal list. Alongside that, we want to add another text field. So I'm going to drag another one into my vertical box. And this one is going to be the amount of power that this thing currently has. And I'm going to put this onto the right hand side. And um, actually, no, let's tell you what, let's do this as a, a sort of table. So we have stuff on the left and stuff on the right here. That might look bit better. So let's replace that with a horizontal box. And then in that horizontal box, we're going to put in two text fields. One, two. So as I said, I want one on the left and one on the right. So the one on the left, I can leave as is, just five left. And I want to click on fill to fill up the available space. If I go onto the other one and choose fill again, it will also fill up the available space. I'm then going to tell this one to write justify. So go down to justification and hit write justify. And I quite like that. That's good. So this first text box is going to be um, current power. Oh, wrong, wrong space. Current power. And put a colon, make it look a bit better. And this one would be a variable that's going to change based on what power it has. So I'm just going to tick this variable at the top and change this to current power text and then going to click on my horizontal box and duplicate it I'm going to change this current power here to maximum power and that's going to display how much power it can maximum hold maximum power and I'm going to click on the second text field and change that to max power underscore text and then I'm going to duplicate the horizontal box again uh, duplicate that and in this one this one is going to be power per tick and the text block next to it is going to be uh, power rate underscore text 
So I'm going to space these out a bit better. So let's click on the top one here and I'm going to put a padding on the top here to about 10, maybe 20. And on the bottom here, I want to put in 10. And on this one, we can put top padding of 10, bottom padding of 10. And this bottom one here, top padding of 10. Actually, I'll do that one at 30. Quite like that. That's good. So I'm then going to add a padding to the whole entire thing. So I'm going to click on the vertical box and go up to the top where it says padding and just type in 10. And that'll bring that all in and give us a nice border around our uh, text here. I'm going to click on the top text, the name of it, and I'm just going to change the size of it slightly to 30. Make it a bit more bold, a bit more standout-ish. And uh, that'll do, okay? Uh, I might want to put in something like an instruction saying like, uh, push tab to close or uh, whatever you want to do here. So I'm going to put in a little uh, text field into that vertical box again at the bottom there. I'm going to click on it and just right justify it and tell this thing to say uh, press E to close. And it's going to adjust the padding, I think, on the power per tick there. Let's change that to 15. Or 10, there we go. And on the text here, I'm gonna make that fill the available space. So it takes up the rest of the of the space available. And I'm just gonna take this vertical alignment to align to the bottom and it'll push it to the bottom of the box. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's hit compile and go to the graph here. So with all these text fields that we've got available to us as a variable. We want to make variables that we link to them. So I'm going to click on new variable and this will be power source name and that'll be a text type. And I want to turn it editable and expose on spawn. I then want to do uh, current, uh, sorry, they're not current, we'll do a power block and this will be a variable type of the block we want. So do block and it'll be uh, in this case be test block no, placeable block sorry and turn that editable and expose on spawn the power and all that stuff we're going to get from the power block okay so don't fret about that getting it through here that's all i want to do so we're going to hit compile and then close this and then on my uh solar panel when we interact with it we currently got it saying hello. So instead of doing that, we're going to tell it to create a widget. So create widget. And we're going to choose the power panel. And now I'm going to choose the name here. So I'm going to do a solar panel. And the power block is going to be itself. Once we've got that, we're going to do return value out and do add, uh, not say add, uh, we'll do promote to variable. And we'll call this one power panel UI. And then we're gonna drag that out to add it to viewport. Add to viewport. And because it's a canvas, it will stretch out across the whole entire rest of the screen. Hit compile and let's test how that looks. So let's build up solar panel and go up interact with it. And there it is. Okay. So at the moment it will stay on the screen. I can still move around and so forth. So let's get rid of that. So I'm going to go back to my user interface and go to graph and on the construct here, we're going to get the player character and we're going to turn disable movement. Okay. And we'll hit close on that. So now if I push play, Go to the panel, walk up to it, push E. I can no longer move. I can still look around, but I can't move. If I push E to close, it won't. What it's going to do is keep building more and more widgets onto the screen. So instead of adding a widget, I want to remove it. So how we do that is we go into our power, power solar panel. And before we create the power panel widget, we're going to check whether or not the power panel UI has been set to something. So we're going to check if it's valid. So drag this out and choose get, right click on it and convert to validated get. 
plug that in. If it's not valid, you're going to create a power panel widget. If it is valid, we're going to, when we push E again, we're going to tell it to delete itself. So from here, we do remove from parent, which removes it from the screen. And then we're going to set the power panel to nothing. So that will toggle it off and on as long as I'm looking at it. There you go. So now we've got pass data to it. Now we're passing already what blocks going through to it, which is through here with reference to self. What I want to do now is tell the panel to read that self data to get us the panel, uh, the power coming from the solar panel. And that power you can see come from all these things here. So we're going to close that and go into my interface. Go to the graph and an event construct. We're going to drag out the power block to get and then drag out current power and choose get and from here set text and that allows you to change the text that's on there that text is going to come from the power block so drag that out and type in current maybe not current uh power pardon me uh oh we actually have to cast this first of all let's cast that cast to uh power solar and then we can get current stored energy and plug that into there now it may be worthwhile to store this as reference for now so drag out as polar panel and promote to variable and this will be solar panel If you're using multiple power slots and you need to be the parent, then obviously you would store this as the parent variable, um, but the parent should still have all this stuff. So I'm going to then drag that out to set text, and let's do the other ones. So max power, get, and that's going to come from solar panel, get max stored energy, set text. And you can plug that in you just do that for all the other ones as well but keep going so here we've got the power rate text set text and that rate we can drag from the same solar panel here uh what's it called tick no what if, what can we call it energy gain per tick there we go and connect that up Hit compile and then close that. Now if I push play, great solar panel, place it, interact with it, and you can see those values there. However, slight issue. As you can see from our print strings in the top left, the values are changing. However, they aren't changing here. So what I want to do is change the values when they are being changed. So the way we do that is we go back to our power solar and we are going up to the tick rate up here so this tick rate is what's spawning the different energy what i want to do is do a, a variable call on our power panel to tell it to update so i'm going to get rid of the print string drag the power panel ui out choose get then right click on it and convert to validate to get now you want to do that because you may not have the ui on the screen if it's not on the screen you don't want to update it uh, if you do try it, it will give you an error. So with the validate get, we can then drag from the power panel UI and call a custom uh, custom event. Now currently I don't have one, so let's go back to our UI and to the graph. And we're just going to add a custom event here. Call it refresh panel. And I'm going to plug this in, not at the start, because I don't need to. I just want to plug it into where we start setting the text values. So drag that in, connect it up there. And I also did notice I forgot to drag in the name. So let's do set name. Uh, sorry, not set that one. It's power block name. Get set text. And 
it'll be power source name goes into in-text. Compile. So we've got this custom event refresh panel on the power solar. I'm going to drag out here and do refresh panel. And that will connect to is valid. Hit compile. And let's test that out. Build a solar panel. Interact with it. And you see the current power is now increasing every time it ticks. And if I push E to close, it will close it. However, I can't move. So we need to re-enable movement. That's quite simple to do. So you just go to the power panel here. So then we will add a destruct event. And that will be called when it's destructed or when it's removed from the parent, in other words. And we're going to just get the player character. And then from there, we'll get and set movement mode. Here to walking. Hit compile and close that. So now I build my solar panel, I place it into the world, interact with it. There's my energy being generated. I push E to close and I can walk away. Walk up to it again, push E, and there you go. Again, E to close, and away we go. And that's it. So what we're going to do in the next part is start working on another block that's going to take power from our solar panel here into itself and we're going to connect those up with a cable that generates the power from one to the other so join us in the next part over on patreon.com forward slash wine lady right now uh, for donations of just one dollar get access to all of my videos before anyone else and i want to just say a big thank you to all my patrons and youtube members for their continued support if you're watching this and you haven't yet subscribed make sure you hit that subscribe button Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.